So now it's my, my great pleasure to introduce our, our keynote speaker, uh, Sri Gal, is, is an alumni of our department. And it's, it's hard to believe that it was just uh, 14, 15 years ago when he graduated, because uh, the career, his career is just stuck. I mean, I was, I was very thrilled, you know, when I was uh, Joanne Polikoski, who was right here, who pointed me to Tzvi as an alumni of our department, because when I looked at the web, the web page and I started looking at Google, I said, you know, how did we miss him? You know, why, why didn't we know anything about him? Uh, Svi has been, a, is currently a chief information officer of Warner Music. He has been before a president of AT&T.com, and uh, he, uh, he has had, a, you know, an incredible executive and career in both technology and, and management uh, in IT. Uh, he won a very prestigious Albert Einstein Award from the State of Israel for science and technology. This is uh, given to the very few people. Uh, so uh, we are really very proud to have uh, to have alumni of our department uh, at this high position, and we are very pleased to have him here today to, be, to give the keynote. And we are even more pleased to give a keynote with his title. <laughs> so uh, uh, please, everybody, welcome to Sri Uh, since we're going to talk about a very serious subject, I'm going to try to make it as funny as possible. Uh, but before we start, I have to give you my two cents, actually three cents, about job offshoring, which will be the next subject. First one is that uh, America used to have a huge advantage over the rest of the world by the fact that we were more educated. That's no longer the case. Second thing, if uh, you ever wonder why the current economic recovery is jobless, think again. The third thing, which is more positive, is that innovation cannot be offshore, so there is hope. And with this, we're going to move to this subject. Okay, um, well, I'll let you read it, because if I read it to you, it will spoil it. But I'll give you a few seconds to understand. Uh, but this should show you the current atmosphere as it is today in the market. By you, by the way. <laughs> okay? So, with this in mind, what we're going to talk about today really is the file sharing trends. I mean, where did it come from? Where is it going? Uh, of course, this is just sharing, so what's the big deal? Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how NAFTA morphed into Kazakh. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the tactics being used against uh, the Kazakh alike. Uh, what's next in, in the file sharing uh, world and the uh, P2P war, as we call it? Some of the ethical moral issues of the subject, if you care, and uh, some sorts of uh, philosophical ideas about uh, will the current strategies work. Basically, my little uh, 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 crystal ball, and uh, will the strategies go backfire? And is it is not really relevant for us. So, uh, by the way, each and every page will have probably one or two totally relevant. Icons or pictures, and not just the. <laughs> anyway, so Napster was the pioneer. It was really a fantastic innovation, uh, and it peaked at about 15 million users uh, at the time. After the lawsuits of the early 2001, uh, within very few months, Napster lost almost about 13 million in just you know, no time. Uh, so hooray, industry won. Well, not really. Because by early 03, uh, Tesla became larger than Napster was at its peak, and it's continuing to grow. Well, used to. Um, but since the individual lawsuit announced in mid 03, uh, there has been a significant drop off in uh, Tesla and the like usage. But once again, there is a growth in the usage of networks that are perceivably safe, uh, the ones that actually use encryption and proxy uh, services. Now, what is being shared? You know, what, are, what are the things that are being shared? Uh, as we know, sex is still the best seller of the internet. Uh, probably the only thing that makes money, really, the internet is sex. <laughs> so, uh, this is still the number one. But music is a second, uh, you know, second right after that. Um, by the way, there were some comments initially that the idea of the casa and the file sharing is to allow uh, you know, unknown artists to develop and publish their music so everybody can hear it and buy it and, and get to know them. So we looked and we said that, that may be a valid idea. 
And indeed, 0.03% of the music that is on the market has been created and distributed by those. So we accepted the argument and we continue. 15% uh, is movies, and this is increasing very quickly, and we expect it to probably overcome movie, uh, music in, in the near future. Again, related uh, is about 11%, also going very fast, and there's a little bit of the same. So, uh, this is fast track self reporting. So, that's what they claim uh, that has happened to them. As you can see, there was a huge peak somewhere in 2003. And that's uh, close to the time that they launched the IAM campaign and all of those things. And uh, actually it was an IAM campaign that we did to let people know that what they're doing is not right. <laughs> and uh, of course due to the fact that people decided that, uh, gee, this is immoral, let's stop using it, they stopped using it, right? This was the only reason. But there was also something else that had to do with the lawsuits that were filed. And uh, as a result of this, we saw uh, quite uh, a decline in the usage of Castle, uh, which is the network that Kazla is running on. Um, however, as we can see that, uh, the so-called perceived safe, safe networks are in increase. Those are the ones that provide you the encryption, the proxy, and the illusions that you cannot be sued. And we'll talk about why this illusion. Um, now, IP piracy is the second oldest scene. We all know what the oldest scene is. So this is the second one. Uh, and it started with really physical copies of, of books in medieval times, uh, software piracy of the mid 80s, and, and all the way to the digital piracy. Uh, it is accelerating, and uh, basically in the world, more than 1 billion illegal CDs are being created. Uh, India is uh, leading not just in outsourcing but also in piracy. And five of every 1,000 CDs being created in India are legal. Uh, so, as a result, by the way, no Indian artist uh, actually broke it after uh, Ravi Shankar, which is 85 year old, and which in long years, etc. But this was it. And the reason is that no major recording company has any presence in India anymore. Because it doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so, why is this different? Uh, since, again, piracy have been around and, you know, the industry has always been, uh, you know, complaining about the VCRs are going to kill the movies and uh, the radio is going to kill, you know, the, the records and, and the player piano is going to kill everything else. Why is this different? The platform is easily distributed software on general purpose PC. So it exists everywhere. The internet allows people to publish copyrighted material to millions of strangers. So before, if you would just, uh, you know, uh, record the music from the radio on, on a cassette and give it to a friend, okay, the damage was controlled. Now that you record it so-called, you put it on a shared drive, millions of people are getting it instantaneously. So there is a real damage that is, is coming there. There's also, also, of course, the perceived right to share files. Many of uh, the users and probably most of you believe that you have a constitutional right to so-called share. Uh, and again, making one file available on shared drive <coughs> really basically making it everywhere. So probably the only way for musicians in the future to make a living is, as you can see here, uh, yeah, the plug. So, again, why is it different? Commercial IP piracy used to be institutional. In other words, uh, CDs were created illegally for many, many years. But there were big factories that were hidden somewhere in China, operated by the uh, you know, Red Army and stuff and such under disguise, and they were doing it. Eventually, they decided to shut it down, and there were a lot of issues, etc. Now it's not the case anymore. Every PC has a CD burner, and most of the new ones have also DVD burners. Um, again, with the fast connection to the internet, broadband, etc., this PC is now a, a source for new songs uh, into the P2P networks. And by the way, 20% of the 18 and 19 year olds uh, have uh, downloaded movies in the past uh, months. So it's not just music, it is now movies. Um, okay, who are the P2P users? Okay, those are the age ranges 12 to 13 year olds, download 40%. And the uh, average files are 14. This increases at the 18 to 19. 60% of the 18 to 19 year olds are downloaders, and 
and so you keep a file that's in the down on the bottom of the files and months on an average. Uh, so, this is just sharing, so why do we cry? Um, since 2000, there was 31% decline in CD unit sales uh, in the US. Now, the size of the US market, which was 14.6 billion in 1999, with 1.1 billion units sold, uh, is going to uh, about 12.6 in 2002, and mid-year 2003 was 4.6, so double it, it's going to be probably 9.2. So this is going way down. The top selling albums uh, in 2000 sold 60 million units, in 2002, uh, 74 million units. The question is, uh, are, pe are people not buying those CDs just because the music became bad? <laughs> or there is another reason. Um, you may have read uh, about some of the recent playoffs at Sony and some other places in Universal, thousands of people were fired, and um, the, artist, uh, the artist roster has been cut dramatically, because right now, uh, the way it goes is for an artist to continue to record, they need to be popular. I, mean, I know it's hard to believe, but the music companies are not a charity, so if they don't make a buck, they are not going to record the artists. And uh, amazing things have happened, this could feel like so. Uh, amazing things that, that happened was that uh, some of the more famous artists that you may know are being killed by the you know, most aggressive fans. Uh, an example would be that uh, Neil Young could not record a new CD, a new album now, because he just barely broke even in the last one, and he had a huge amount of people that downloaded the new album before it actually went to the street, so uh, they didn't buy it. Guess what? Mm. Now we cannot issue an album. So the people that actually are going to kill the career of Neil Young will be the Neil Young effects. That's kind of an awesome moment. <laughs> but, um, by the way, just in terms of trivia, intellectual property is the United States number one export. If we're talking about the future and offshoring, etc., etc., IP is what we do. And if you think that the issues that we are discussing here is music piracy, you're wrong. The issues that we are discussing here is intellectual property. <laughs> if you don't have respect to one, you won't have respect to others. <laughs> we'll talk about it in a second. So, one of the other famous arguments was that, uh, gee, you know, I'm just sampling, I'm just downloading this song, I'm going to listen to this, and I'm going to rush to the store and buy the CD. We heard it many times. And this is what we call, in a very polite way, a lie. <laughs> because, what we see here is, as a result of listening to uh, a downloaded track, you know, what do you do? Well, basically, it's a number. People are buying less now after they are listening to the same thing. Okay, um, this is an excuses for stealing. By the way, I don't know if you know the symbol there, that's the A for anarchism. Uh, used to be my plan, you know, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, listen, these are expensive, that's why we don't buy them. Uh, I'm only something to talk about. Uh, many artists cannot be found on the legal networks. That's the real reason. Uh, now, there are also some excuses. excuses. Uh, they, meaning us, were stealing from us, meaning you, for years by imposing high prices. That's why the city prices are so, so large. So in, in terms of punishment, we're going to show those that call the music, and now we are not going to buy those CDs, and now they'll be punished. Um, the question is, who do you really punish? That's something to think about later. Again, I have the constitutional right for this, and there's freedom of expression, and all of the other excuses that are used to uh, uh, justify stealing. And it's like recording from the radio. What's the difference? That's another one. It doesn't hurt the artist. Only the big fat record companies. So I have to admit that I did get uh, you know, some weights. Here I am, and uh, next time I will come with the cigars, I will get <laughs> uh, And by the way, it does hurt the artist. Um, the artist should work for the art, not for the money. This is one of the things that we heard many times. Uh, look at our million of, of millions of dollars, uh, you know, Madonna is making, and uh, those guys, and therefore, you know, it's not going to hurt them. It is true that Madonna doesn't need uh, to record any other CDs in her life to, let's say, have a comfortable living. 
That's definitely true. This is not true for the developing artists that are just in the beginning of their way. So, uh, and without an initial recording label, Madonna would not be Madonna. Um, now, uh, is the fuse. This used to be on the listen side, and now it moved to the excuse with the introduction of iTunes and the like. Uh, nobody can tell me anymore that it is easier to find songs uh, on the P2P network than it is on the legal. Uh, the P2P network uh, movement is grassroots by the people and for the people. Again, that's the anarchist kind of groundwork. That's nice to hear, but uh, okay, in terms of idealism, the Irish CEO resigned a few months ago and these allegations of investing about $2 million into his own pocket from the company. So. Those are idealistic P2P, grassroots, uh, you know, revolutionaries that you're really supporting, but maybe you're not really there just for the idea, for the sake of the discussion. And of course, the most downloaded, uh, you know, tracks are the most uh, famous ones, okay? uh, the most popular ones. Uh, for the life of me, I cannot understand why Britney Spears is so popular. <laughs> She looks good, but she has no voice whatsoever. <laughs> Just my opinion, and I know that I'm too old for this. Now, one of the issues that we see is also that uh, legitimate businesses, such as SBC Pacific Bell, uh, you know, look good advertisement. Go actively crazy, like your music, but build a song library, whatever. Download all the music you like. And this is coming from a legitimate company. This does not help our case, by the way. Now, how did Napster morph into Casa? Well, first of all, obviously, the hardware advances in the open PC platform have enabled software to advance. You can enter, it's a faster processor and, and obviously faster connection. Uh, you can read CDs in minutes instead of, of, of an hour. If you, know, if you remember the Times 2 CD burner, it used to take about an hour to create a new CD. Now it's very quick. Um, having software as the heart of the value proposition for consumers makes the P2P situation fundamentally different than those faced by entertainment uh, industry before. Because now it is really just a software. It's, it's really available everywhere. It's easy to use. Uh, the adoption of the DVD player uh, is measured in years, while the software advances can be both in a few months. The iTunes um, music store was able to deploy millions of users in one in days. Basically, the first days they went out, they sold over a million uh, downloads. One day. So, software has really uh, power of its own. Uh, PCRs emerged overnight, but the movie industry had used to try out new business models before it came about. Um, the rapidly shifting technology landscape is forcing the entertainment industry to respond in far shorter time frames than they had to before. Because we knew that when the new DVDs came, we had a long time to prepare for them. And if you remember, the DVDs came about in about, let's say, five, six years ago. Only in the last two to three years we saw really the shift from basically video-based to DVD-based, both in, in the blockbusters of the world, of course the creation of Netflix and those type of things, now people are really switched from videos to DVDs. It took a while, and with this a while, the industry had time to first digitize the content and be ready for the change. Now, technically, Napster was extremely efficient uh, design. I mean, with the centralized set of servers and, and uh, repository and, and, and metadata, very nice design, I mean, as a technician, I really adore the designs that they did and the work. But legally, it had a problem because they hosted the content on their servers. It was quite clear that they are knowingly uh, breaking the law. Uh, now, what Hazard did uh, in, in as a result is to really try to overcome those type of weaknesses. So there is no centralized index of content. It's really within the indexes and the content is now within the users. And what Kazaa does, using the uh, super node mechanism, is the ability to make the searches within the groups, and then if you don't find it within the group, you can go across groups. So um, really, there is no ability so far, so, so to say, to integrate filtering without re the decentralized system. That's one of the arguments there. 
We're going to talk about it in a few minutes, which shows that there are some words. Uh, the ongoing relationship with the end users are minimized. Once you download Kaza, you really don't go to Kaza.com anymore. You're done. That's it. You have the software. If Kaza disappears tomorrow, who cares? You have the software, it's fine. You won't have the new releases, but it's okay. It's still going to work. And of course, it's a complicated uh, corporate structure. I don't know if you know the corporate structure of Kaza, which is owned by Sherman, which is an Australian company that half owned by the group that lives in a .tr type of uh, .tv and, uh, type of an island, which is, by the way, an old, old oil refinery in the middle of the sea that declared themselves as a country. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting uh, legal environment uh, to say, you know, go sue us, like sue who? There's nobody there, so that makes it a little bit more complicated. And again, these changes are not coincidental. And from the Electronic Freedom Foundation, what peer-to-peer -peer developers need to know about copyright law? And they just tell you. And uh, better to sell standalone software than ongoing services. Can you plausibly deny knowing that your end user are up to, etc., etc.? In other words, the so-called Electronic Freedom Foundation uh, is basically given, you know, the pirates um, legal arguments how to uh, protect themselves. Okay, now, so what do we do about it? Uh, legally, so there is an ongoing uh, battle uh, for the software creators liable for, the, uh, for what they're doing. Again, uh, the main claim of uh, Kaza and the like in the defense <coughs> is that in reality, in reality, we created a P2P network for one reason and one reason only. The reason is we want a parent to take a picture of their children and then move it to the grandmothers to see. That's the only reason we created it. The fact that there are some people that are actually sharing music and movies, really it surprised us as well as it surprises you. We really didn't know. <laughs> so, this is one of their arguments. Um, and, uh, which, there was a similar case in a way. There was uh, an operator of a small jet plane, uh, not jet plane, like a couple type of planes in Florida, that was hired by the company to take some boxes from point A to point B, and they did it for about two and a half years. In one of those flights, they were arrested by uh, uh, the, the feds, and probably what they took from point A to point B was big sacks of cocaine. Now, the question was, is the pilot you know, responsible for the delivery? He claimed, I never knew what it is. And in fact, in court, he lost because basically there was enough fact to show that you know, if he really didn't know what it is, he had to be blind and uh, with no sense of smell and also a little bit deaf, which makes him a very unlikely candidate to be a pilot. <laughs> uh, he has about 22 years to think about. I'm sorry, only 20 left. <laughs> you may get out of the 17. Uh, now, technically, uh, basically, service providers that have created uh, offers the interface with the user's experience of obtaining files. Now, what we're doing is something called spoofing, which is, uh, you probably hate what we're doing there, and uh, which is basically taking some of the files and basically make them, you know, noisy or, or uh, wrong or short or, or any other damages that, that go there, so it will take you much, much you know, take, take you much longer to find the files that you're looking for. And redirection, which is basically you go to certain things that you think is uh, the, lit the latest uh, twist uh, rap song, and it directs you to a, a legal uh, site telling you, you know, ceiling is not right, uh, please come by. Uh, we also had a, a small episode by Madonna in which she inserted her own voice into some of the files carrying her name, uh, with uh, a little, uh, con you know, message to the people that were downloading it. Uh, you know, very um, polite way, she was saying, uh, I'm glad I'm not on the radio, so what she was saying is, what the fuck do you think of that? <laughs> That's what she did. Of course, she did not get a lot of great reviews from uh, the people that did it. And we are expanding monitoring for, to gather evidence of infringement. Um, we have cease and desist uh, notices, subpoenas for lawsuits. And uh, again, one of the other things is that lawsuits are going against individuals. Now you may ask yourself, why 
did the terrible IAA chose those 12 year olds and 75 year old people to go after? First of all, they went after people that had more, downloaded more than a thousand files in a given time. Uh, the second thing, uh, it was funny to hear the, the defense arguments in those cases. I mean, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, two things. The first, the 12 year old uh, mother claims that uh, since she paid $29.95 to Casa, obviously the music is legal. Now, I wonder why she would pay $29.95 to Casa, but the bond she paid to get Casa uh, without the advertisements. Uh, this is a nice argument, and obviously was accepted by the court. Uh, the, the one that I liked the most was the one by the 75 year old person that claims that he bought the PC about a year ago. He never plugged it into the, you know, into the electricity to begin with, definitely not to the internet. He doesn't know what the internet is. And out of nowhere, there were more than a thousand files that appeared on his disk. Uh, which is great because finally we had an answer to all of those scientists that claims that spontaneous combustion is impossible. <laughs> Here we are, we have the proof, it is possible. Okay, so he actually claims that, uh, his defense lawyer claims that it may be that uh, the PC recorded it from the radio uh, while he was listening to the radio. Which is, again, yeah, it shows that, that, that heater exists. I mean, again, this is really very important facts. And, and I'm, I'm actually a little bit sorry that this, this, this case did not, was not brought up in Kansas because this fits into the creationism and the rest of it. <laughs> anyway. So, uh, the alternative obviously is to create, uh, not just to bring a stick, but also to bring a carrot, and uh, really easy to use legitimate services such as the iTunes and the rest of them, uh, make it very simple, very easy to download songs in the future also with movies, and uh, basically take, off, uh, take out many of the arguments that this is not uh, you know, doable. Now, there is, by the way, uh, a good argument to say that uh, many uh, artists or songs cannot be found yet on the legal networks. The most famous case is the case of the Beatles, which to this day continue to refuse to put their material uh, out for sales in a digital form. Uh, this is about to change because they had this in the with CMI. The biggest beef about it is the fact that they claim that Apple should not use the name Apple because the, app, the Apple label used to belong to the Beatles. So that's really the issue. They want Apple to change the name of their company because they have the right to it. Uh, it's obviously ridiculous, but that's not the worst because the same company actually sued a company by, by the name of Hutchinson, not, not the, not the uh, East, uh, Far East Asia network company, but actually companies that used to actually import apples, real apples, into the UK because they used the symbol of a red apple under the name of Ashenstone to say to represent the company. And the, the, the Apple Apple label uh, sued them, claiming that they do not use the apple as a symbol. But then they said, but we import apples. <laughs> Change the name of the fruit. <laughs> okay, so we are the last generation of no apples as apples, the next one will be different. Name. Okay, what, we, what can we expect from the next generation with, you know, in terms of uh, what's going to happen? Uh, it's going to be more anonymous. The IP proxy is, is a good example of this. Uh, there will be some uh, so-called private networks, like Waste. Uh, there will be shift to less monitored channels, like, such as Usenet. And will be more, there will be more uh, encryption, such as the Earth Station 5, Freenet, etc. And uh, therefore, it's going to be more difficult to obtain information easily about which users are sharing which files. And uh, fewer file exchanges will be there with more content in, in each, like BitTorrent, uh, which you probably know. Uh, this is uh, Earth Station 5, the uh, basically publication there. Uh, they are worth to mention because of due to three reasons. First of all, they are the most vocal in the peer-to-peer -peer networks. They are the ones that actually declared war on the recorded music. Uh, the second thing is that they claim at the times that they reside 
uh, in the uh, Janine refugee camp and come and get us if you can. And uh, they actually posted a, a photograph of a suicide bomber for a few weeks until they decided not to do it. And the third fact is that the software really doesn't work. So you know, with all this big propaganda, one would wish that this works, but it doesn't. But look at what they're saying. <coughs> ES5 hides your IP address. Uh, it's the first and only pin, you know, peer-to-peer -peer network, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so basically what they're trying to do is to tell you it is safe to use them. So uh, there is also a three-leg strategy. Uh, but of course, I have to use the possible financial diagram to show it. Uh, in the business, there uh, will be legal challenges by the IAAA and the MPAA uh, to stop the illegal copyright infringement in the business, uh, which will be very similar to the act of the Software Association uh, in, the, in the 90s. At the time, uh, the companies claimed that, uh, gee, you know, we bought Oracle and we bought 10 licenses. Really, we, don't, we, we are not responsible for individual employees making another copy of the, you know, of the license and using it. I mean, it's, they do whatever they want. We are not responsible. Uh, this obviously went to court and the companies found that they are responsible. Similarly here, the companies can claim we are not responsible for the behavior of our uh, you know, uh, employees. But again, the employees are using companies' network and companies' PCs, so this argument will not go well. Again, in the consumer, we talked a little bit about the stick, we talked a little bit about the carrots, so we know what it is. In the universities, I definitely expect uh, legal challenges to come against individual students in the near future. And uh, there's also an interesting thing which you, the bandwidth, depending on, on the university, has exceeded 50% of, the, of the, uh, what the institution has, preventing some you know, real good work that is being done. And uh, because it's all dedicated to P2P networks. So the next time that uh, the CIO of a uh, university goes to the global and says, gee, I need a little investment to increase our bandwidth, and the question is, uh, and why do you need it? Because we just did it two years ago. Well, because 60% um, of our network is now done for P2P. I'm not sure that it's going to be accepted extremely well. Uh, so what would be a carrot? Uh, in this case. Uh, and I think that one of the ways, one of the things that we saw is really a legal alternative that basically installed the server in different locations in the universities and the dormitories, etc., which will have the, you know, the newest songs, the top 40 billboard, uh, the movies, etc. By the way, uh, of the top 40 billboard uh, last month, uh, there were two pop songs, two rock songs, and 36 were lacking over. So this is the, the trend today. Um, and basically, just have it there, do whatever you want with it. You know, stream it, download it uh, to mobile devices, do whatever you want. As long as you do not share it on a peer to peer network, you'll be able to do whatever you want. And how do you charge for it? Basically, one of the ways to do it is uh, as you pay today fees for uh, high bandwidth usage in the dormitories, etc., you may pay. I don't know, $200 a year for uh, entertainment. And the advantage of this, of course, is that normally you don't pay it, it's your parents who pay it. <laughs> anyway, so ethical and moral issues uh, in the public attitude, because um, it, for the longest time, the, the public believed really that there's nothing wrong in the sharing of files. And I think that right now, there's almost nobody that can claim that they think it's so, you know, that they don't think that it's, it's hurting anybody, or they don't think that there's a legal challenge, etc. Uh, it is true. I mean, people, people like right now start to know that what they're doing <coughs> is wrong. Now, they may decide still to do it. That's a different issue. But people actually really know what they're doing right now. Uh, an interesting thing to think about universities, from this perspective, is that uh, you know, with the new generation of MBAs, for example, and the future generation of business leaders uh, that we are creating in the universities will have little regards to the national public and copyright laws. The question is, if you don't respect a certain aspect of IP or copyright, why would you respect another aspect? What is the difference? That this is music and movies and okay, and now when it comes to uh, 
uh, you know, knowledge of uh, uh, another company or internal, you know, inside trading, this is going to be different. You're going to be somebody become an angel and uh, when he deals with different things. It's hard to believe that someone that is being used to uh, override copyright and intellectual property uh, in one area will become uh, suddenly uh, honest on other areas. So the question is, are we created the next uh, annual world on type of type of leaders? From the universities. And can really a reputable research university afford to know to know about it, do nothing, and defect to support this type of people? That's a question that comes basically to the heads of the universities. The president of Penn uh, basically declared that it's not going to happen on an issue. And he was the first and the only one that I know of so far that actually put the moral ethical issues as the main reason to fight it. Um, I'm not going to read it, this is a long thing, so if you want later on to read it, but basically... Uh, okay, will the current strategies work? Um, this, <laughs> okay, uh, now 64% of the people now understand that it is illegal to make uh, music from computer available to others or download them free over the internet. It's up from 37%, so the awareness is there. Um, among regular internet users, it's about 69%. Um, and that's part of the, what you see in the articles in the, in the paper. And uh, you don't need to read the article to understand. And this is uh, my favorite book of the Okay, got it. Now, good news, the digital sales are up significantly, they continue to grow in an exponential way, which we like, which basically means that uh, people are now more aware of the fact that they can purchase legal music and actually they are doing it. Now, just, how is it relevant to graduate students overall? Um, as a hobby, it's really fun to work on encryption and other mechanisms to help the grassroots movement of the P2P networks. Uh, but it is wrong, and if you are honest, you would know it, it is wrong. Profession, by the way, I do believe that an anti-pirate will become a real profession in the near future because the issue is IP is not just music. Uh, some of you know that, but the same day that the last Harry Potter book uh, appeared on the bookshelf, uh, many of us already had a PDF version available. Now, I don't read books on computers, but my daughters do. So, Maybe the next generation will actually read it online. So it is an IP issue. In terms of research, uh, again, media companies will sponsor anti-piracy as a legal alternative. Research in cooperation with research institutions and universities. We do that, many others will do that. It's going to come as, as it is. Um, just a little bit of an attitude uh, to finish this, and then we can have some time for questions. And, uh, and see the reaction there. Hopefully we have enough time to do it. Okay, and that's basically it. So thank you and have a good day.